Query functions can be sensitive creatures. So as we we all know, when you're writing a query function, like I'm, I'm highlighting here, you need to select the exact columns that you're looking for. Either the column letters, you know, column C, sum of column D, or if you're nesting and you're gonna wrap a query around a query, you know, that you would specify the column numbers. So column three, call three, sum of call four, because the you know, the, the columns have lost their letters. So you need to be really specific with either your column numbers or your column letters, which is a challenge because what if your columns move around? What if, um, you know, what if you, you're working with a CSV export and the format changes? Column C moves to column J, vice versa, whatever it is. Um, and you want your query function to adapt, not look, not requiring you to say, read column C or column J, but read whatever is present in the header. So if you want the, for example, this is a, a set of sample tweets, super old, but always my go-to sample data. If you want to read whatever is in the handle field, um, whether that's in column C or column J or whatever it is, uh, that's always been a challenge and query doesn't do that. So basically what I, put together is a way to use the match function. If you look in column five here, we're gonna use the match function to insert our dynamic column numbers. So if you use match and we look for handle in that tweets first row, we'll see it's in the third column. So column C, um, similarly, if we're looking for retweets, it'll be in column four. So the match function goes the first element is the string that you're looking for. The second element is the range where you're looking for it. So A, A1 through D1 is gonna be our header row. And then zero just means an exact match versus a, a fuzzy match. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna nest two queries. The first query we're just gonna to use to find our column numbers. Um, the second query we're gonna do our, the stuff that actually looks like a query, right? Summing and having where conditions and grouping and labeling and all that stuff. So let's take these uh, step by step. So the first query, uh, let's just pull it out here and actually run it. So the first thing we're gonna do is, we're, you notice there are curly braces around the range. Um, we wanna use curly braces because we wanna get right into saying column numbers rather than column letters. Uh, and if you, set if you wrap your range in curly braces it'll recognize it as basically like a nested array rather than specific columns um, so that's a little we can kind of trick sheets into into shortcutting that so we don't need our header row here um, it, within this array because we're not we're not going to be pulling those in we'll add labels back later but we are going to do is if we pull this out um, what we're going to do is basically this, add this select statement that's just call three, call four. So that's matching our handle and retweets. And that's all it does. It just makes a simple, the simplest possible select statement in here from our range. And then boom, we have our two columns that we actually wanted to work with. Um, so if those columns moved around, um, say we this always happens, right? Someone adds a column and it breaks your query, but that won't break this because it's still looking up. Where's the handle? Where's the retweets? Um, I think this is probably like the most annoying thing about working with queries is, oh, someone added a column. Like it, it just breaks the whole thing. So let's not do that. So we have our first query there. Um, and then our second query is going to be basically wrapped around the first one. So we're going to add another query on the outside in put the, the first query kind of nested inside of that. And then we're gonna do all our actual query stuff of um, selecting, let's let's zoom in on this so it's a little larger. You know, selecting the sum of retweets, so sum of call two by handle, so call one. So basically what we're gonna do there is, um, in, you know, normally we would write this like, you know, select C, sum call D. Uh, select C sum D, group by C, order by sum D descending, right? That would give us our retweets descending. But instead of all that, 
we're not going to do any of that. We're going to use call one and call two because in this first query, we separated it down to two columns. So we'll say call one, some call two, exactly like we did with column letters, group by call one, order by some call two. And then the last thing that we'll do is we can do all of our labeling in very specific ways because we now know that call one is always going to be handle and then call two, which we're summing is always going to be the total retweets. So our everything about our query, our math, our labeling is going to be uh, adapt to um, the shifting of those columns. So when we put it all together, you know, this might look complex, but what it's really doing is the first row is that simple query that we ran up here that pulls in the columns that we need. And then the second line is doing the actual math and the stuff that we want to do with the query. The first query is always keep this as simple as possible. I'd recommend and just string together, you know, your matches. If you want to add a new column, just you're just, just adding another of those match elements. So if we look at the bottom here, put it all together, um, we'll see we have our first query here that ends, that's just pulling our columns, and then our second query, which is doing all the math, um, and it has the same results. And if you notice, we can, let's add, add a couple of columns, won't change the results. So it's, I know this has saved me and my team a lot of time, uh, debugging stuff that that breaks um, so hope you enjoy it and I'll link in the description to uh, to this sheet so you can make a copy and play around with it for yourself take care